Jillian, God bless you so much. God bless you so much. God bless everybody that's joined. Annette, God bless you. Benjamin, God bless you. I have a short message for you. But I want us to enjoy this song. I love this song. It is a new one. I mean, for those who may not understand the tree language, please bear with me. But um, I have a short message. Get your Bibles ready, please. Please get your Holy Bibles ready, please. Today we're about to talk about handling things we care, handle with care. Please get your Holy Bibles ready, please. You see, for those who may not understand the language, um, it says, I'm not better, you are not better than someone else. Amen. In life, you have to handle people with care. Amen. Please get your Holy Bibles, get your Holy Bibles in about two minutes. In about two minutes, we're about to go into the Word of God. So please get your Holy Bibles ready. Amen. I want us to just enjoy this song. But in two minutes, we're going to the Word of God. So please get your Holy Bibles ready. Get your holy bibles share the video please share the video also Get your holy bibles ready in about one minute we're going into the word of god god bless you my sister oba gloria god bless you Jessica, god bless you today's message is going to be a great blessing to you it's going to teach you it's going to transform your life in the name of jesus so please get your holy bibles ready In the name of Jesus, Amen. You know, before before we go into the Word of God, I want I want you to say a prayer. I want you to say a word of prayer. Pray in the name of Jesus, the Father, Holy Spirit, speak to me, Amen. So you want to pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit of God Himself will speak to you through this word. You you want to personalize the Word of God that is coming. You are telling the Holy Spirit, the Father, let this word be for me, Amen. You say, Have you ever been to a church and when the pastor preached, you know? that this word is for me at the same way the uh, media so i want you to pray and personalize it the father let this word that is coming be for me let it transform my life let it change my life let it impact my life just open up your mouth and pray in the name of the lord jesus i want to hear you pray pray in the name of jesus that the word of god that is coming will be a great blessing to you just open your mouth and pray right now in the name of jesus pray somebody open up your mouth i want you to hear you pray the Father, let the word that is coming be for me. Let the word that is coming, let it be for me. Open up your mouth 
and pray in the name of Jesus. Invite the Holy Spirit of God. Invite the Holy Spirit of God to come and minister through me. That the words will not be my words, but it will be the words of the Holy Spirit. Just open up your mouth and pray. Wherever you are today, God has a word for you. God wants to transform you. God wants to impact you. So you want to invite the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit of God will speak through me. That any spirit that is not of God, any spirit that is not of the one true God, we bind and we arrest. Any demonic spirit, any occult spirit, any power that is not of God, we bind. Somebody just open up your mouth and pray. Invite the Holy Spirit of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, to come and have his way in the name of Jesus. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, to come and have his way in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's enjoy this song and now we'll go into the word of God. bless you so much holy spirit father i pray in the name of jesus that you minister through me i avail myself that today through this broadcast lord let people's lives be transformed lord let our minds and the way we handle things be transformed lord spirit of god i pray that you will speak through me in jesus mighty name amen amen god bless you i lost my voice um uh, but i i know that this message is going to be a great blessing to you please if you have your holy bibles if you have your holy bible please stand with me to the book of second second samuel chapter 4 amen turn to second samuel chapter 4 second samuel chapter 4 amen second samuel chapter 4 amen i'm reading second samuel chapter 4 verse 4 i'm reading please second samuel 4 4 it says jonathan son of saul had a son who was lame in both feet. And now this, this is the account of how he became lame. He said, he was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. His next picked him, sorry, his next picked him up and fled. But as she hurried to leave, he fell and became disabled. His name was Mephibosheth. Amen. The Bible says one day, David's best friend, which is um, Jonathan, went for a war and he was killed in the war. Amen. David's best friend, Jonathan, went for a battle. He went for a war and he was killed in the war. Now, when his father saw, heard that David, I mean, his son Jonathan had been killed, the Bible says, Saul told the servant that, you know, pierce me with the sword, kill me. Amen. And the servant said, no, I can't do that. And the Bible says, Saul drew, drew his own sword and pierced himself in it, into it. Amen. So Saul killed himself. The king Saul, he killed his own, I mean, he took his life. Amen. Now watch this. The Bible says when he killed himself, the armor bearer, I mean the armor bearer or the bodyguard, seeing that Saul was dead, also killed himself. Amen. Now, because of how Saul treated David, because of how Saul mishandled David, Amen. The nurse was afraid that now that David has become a king, David might also mishandle them. Amen. The nurse or the babysitter of Jonathan's son was afraid that now that David is the king, God bless you. Amen. God bless you, Mr. Gerard. God bless my brother Dixon. Amen. God bless everyone. Patience. Please share the video. Hallelujah. Please, this message is going to be a great blessing to you. So, you know, so you know, Saul killed himself, and the bodyguard or the armor bearer also killed himself. And so now Jonathan, which is Saul's son, had a son called Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was five years old 
when his father died and when his grandfather also also died amen so now the nurse or the babysitter that was taking care of Mephibosheth was afraid that David might mishandle so I mean Mephibosheth amen and because Saul had mishandled David and so you know the nurse was afraid that David might be vindictive hallelujah but now this is what happened amen so so I want so I want you to get a background of the story so Saul is dead his son Jonathan is dead amen Saul died he killed himself because his son Jonathan had been killed in a battle amen and so the nurse that was taking care of Jonathan's five-year-old son, uh, Mephibosheth, was afraid. Amen. So let's read 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 4. Now, it says, Jonathan, son of Saul, had a son who was lame in both feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. The news was that Jonathan and Saul were dead. His nurse, Mephibosheth's nurse, picked him up and fled. But as she hurried to leave, he fell and became disabled. His name was Mephibosheth. Beloved, I want you to understand that Mephibosheth was a prince. Before, because Mephibosheth was Jonathan's son. Jonathan was a prince because Jonathan was, you know, Saul's son. Amen. And so potentially, Jonathan could have been a king. And so Mephibosheth was a potential king. I mean, but, I mean, potential prince. As a matter of fact, he was a prince. The five-year-old boy lived in the palace as long as he was, you know, as long as the father and the grandfather was alive. So this boy was treated as a prince. Mephibosheth is a prince. Amen. Now, but watch this. After Saul died, after Jonathan also died, the nurse, out of fear, took the boy and decided to run away with the boy. And the Bible says, as she was running, as she was in a hurry, running with the five-year-old boy, the boy fell and became lame. That was how Mephibosheth became lame or paralyzed hallelujah you see i want you to take i want you to have this at the back of your mind because this is just the background of what i what i want to share with you through the holy spirit of god today amen i love eggs you see here in america i don't i can okay here in america you hardly see a fowl like like a chicken or a hen or a cock here in america you will not see you know you, you will not see any fowl like a hen a cock walking around but in africa you can see a lot of you know you, you can see them all over and for those of you that are watching those of you who especially have been to africa or live in africa you'd realize that when a hen or when a chicken or when um I said a chicken. <laughs> when a hen or a cock is like, you know, walking around, sometimes somebody will pick a stone and throw it at them just to make sure that they move away from them. Have you witnessed that before? You see, when a fowl is walking around, when a hen or a, you know, a cock is walking around, sometimes, most times in Africa, people might just pick a stone or, you know, make a fist and do something like this just so the animal will run away. Hallelujah. But listen, like I said earlier, I love eggs. I love, I don't joke with my eggs. I do love eggs. Amen. I love eggs. But listen, you see, when God bless you, man of God, Angelo, God bless you. Yes, or a dog. But for now, let's, you know, let's talk about chicken, fowls. So, when the fowl or when a, when a chicken or a cock or a hen is walking around, most times in Africa or in most countries where you can just see them around, people, somebody can pick a stone, throw it at them, just so they will move away from them. Amen. 
but when when you buy an egg or when you have an egg in your hands you realize that you handle the egg with care i love my eggs and most times i will buy a dozen like 12. you know you know and a 12 said like a dozen of an egg over here in america is like 129 a dollar 29 like less than two dollars less than two dollars but when i pick just one of it when i have one of the eggs in my hand and i believe that is what you do too when you have one of the eggs in your hands even though there are 11 more or even though maybe you just have three when you have one maybe there are there will be two more you make sure that that one egg in your hand you handle with care right when we have an egg in our hand we handle the egg with care but the the egg comes from the chicken or the hen that will be throwing stones at ladies and gentlemen today god has a message for you that is why you want to share this video because this video is going to be a great blessing not just to you not just to me but to someone else so please share the video now you see, when in Africa, when we see the chicken, the hen, the cock around, you know, you can just pick a stone and throw it at them. But when you have an egg, you handle the egg with care. You see, I, I am almost always on my phone. I'm not the type with many friends. Trust me, I can be free with people, but I'm not the type with many friends. And so most times, I am almost always on my phone. Amen. I'm almost always on my phone. And I, can, I can't even count the number of times that the phone slipped out of my hands. Maybe I'm dozing off and the phone slipped out of my hands. And I use my feet to make sure that the screen of the phone does not crack. I believe you've done that before. You see, when we have the phone in our hands, we are so particular, we are so conscious of ourselves, we are so cautious that we don't want to scratch or we don't want to crack the screens of our phone. We handle the phones with care. Why? Because we don't want to break the phone. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, now this is the background story the bible says in the book of second kings chapter 4 verse 4 that jonathan after jonathan died he had a son called mephibosheth a prince you know so to speak but you know the bible says when jonathan died and Saul was also dead amen Saul died Saul killed himself because his son was dead amen and so the nurse or the babysitter for for Mephibosheth was afraid that because of the way Jonathan saw mishandled David now that David is a king she was afraid that David might mishandle Mephibosheth like that too and so the woman and the nurse took Mephibosheth running away but in their quest to run away the Bible says she dropped the boy the boy fell and became lame a strong boy a potential boy but because of somebody's carelessness even though her intentions was right with eyes, but now the boy became lame beloved today God wants me to tell you something. The same way you handle your an egg in your hands with so much care. The same way you handle your phone with so much care. The same way you handle glass with so much care. The same way you see, you see, when I drive my car. Maybe yeah, I, I drive with care, but you know, I handle my car. I mean, by the grace of God, it's my car. I drive it when I want to drive it. Amen. But when driving someone else's car, you see, we, I am very careful that nothing happens. Amen. And so, beloved, as human as we are, we are very careful, we are very cautious in handling certain things. And so, the same way you are cautious in handling an egg in your palm, 
or in your hands. The same way you are very cautious in handling a plate or a glass. The same way you are very cautious in handling your phone that you do not crack the screen. Beloved, I want you to know that if there is anything you must handle with care, it's not an egg. Because you can always get an egg. It is not a phone. Because you can always get a phone. You know, it is not a glass. Because you can always get a glass. But beloved, if there is something you have to handle with care, it is your life. It is life. Because guess what? This thing called life, when it slips out of your hands, you can never pick it up again. You can never get it again. When there is life in you, ladies and gentlemen, you have to handle life with care. If there is anything you have to handle with care, it is life. And it is not just your life. It is anything that has life in them. It is anybody that has life in them. You know, sometimes we treat people anyhow. But we handle the egg with caution. Sometimes we talk to people anyhow. We treat people like trash. But we handle our phones. We clean our phones. We wipe our phones. We buy cases for our phones. We spend money on our phones. But we don't spend money on people. We don't handle people with care. We don't handle life with care. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that listen, they may be ugly to you. They may be, you know, annoying to you. They may not be the kind of people you want to see. You may not like the color of their skin. But please and please, as long as there is life in them, handle the life we care. Please share this video. Today God has a word for you. That if there is anything that you handle with care, if I give you my phone, I am sure you make sure that you handle my phone with care. Let's say you are in a church and someone leaves their, their Bible, their something, their bag, and they say they'll be right back. Guess what, boy, lady? Guess what? You make sure you pay attention. You make sure that they will come and meet what they left. But we handle people anyhow. How do you treat people? Yes, they may be poor. Yes, they may be annoying. But please, let's look beyond the activities of men. Let's look beyond the complexity of people. Let's look beyond anything that they may do or they may not do. Let's look beyond our sentiments and, you know, our, 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 our you know, experiences and see life in them. And you know, oh my God, thank you, Holy Spirit. When I tell you to handle life with care, I am telling you to handle Jesus Christ. Because in him is life. He is the life. And so if there's anything you must handle with care, the same way, you know, when an egg is in your hands, you are so cautious that it does not, it, it will not drop. The same way that when your phone is in your hands, you are so cautious that it will not drop. Please, handle the people that are around you with care. Handle the life that is in you with care. You know, because listen, when this thing called life slips out of your hands, when this thing called life, it slips out of your hands, you cannot pick it up anymore. That is why I pity people who know God, who believe in Jesus, who know there is a God, who are born Christians, who are born into Christian homes. They know there is a God. When they, they encounter problems, they shout Jesus. They believe there is a God. But they live their lives anyhow. I pity such people. I pity people who know 
that this thing called life it can leave you it can drop within a second but they take they live their life to chances i pity people who have taken to alcohol drinking 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 knowing that this thing called life can slip out of your hands just like an egg dropping out of your hands and you cannot pick it up again when you lose an egg when you drop an egg you can walk to the next store and buy another egg but when you drop this thing called life you cannot pick it up again that is why you must not live to chance handle this thing called life with care you may not like the person sitting next to you. They are very annoying. They are very ungrateful. But as long as there is life in them, handle them with care. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 4, that the nurse, she had a good intention, and so she was so much in a hurry without handling the boy with care. And so, you know, she had a good intention, but because she was rushing, she messed this thing up. Sometimes you might have a motive. Sometimes you might have an intention. But you may lose your life. That is why you cannot be driving anyhow. That is, why, that is how you cannot be drinking anyhow. That is why you cannot be sleeping with just anybody. That is why you cannot be living your life just anyhow. Because this thing called life, one day, it will sleep just like that. Before you come to your senses, you'll be standing before a king. You'll be standing before God. And God will ask you that listen, Beverly, listen, patience, listen, Annette, listen, who, Maggie, whoever is watching, Medina, listen. God will ask you that I had this, this plan for you. You are supposed to live to a 134 years. Why did you cut your life short? Why did you die in a fatal accident? Why did you die from high blood pressure, I mean pressure, or pressure, whatever? Why did you allow sickness? Handle this life with care. Sometimes you may have to go for medical checkup. It is not wrong to be prayerful and go to the hospital. God is not against, you know, you know, medication god is not against um doctors or what is done in the hospital handle this thing called life with care the same way you will handle an egg in your hands the same way you will handle your phone the same way you will handle a plate the same way you will handle a glass that you will not drop it please handle this thing called life with care if there is anything you must handle with care it is not the egg because when you drop the egg you can get another egg when you drop the phone you can get another phone when you drop you know the glass you can drop you can get another glass but when this thing called life is dropped you can never pick it up again you are the reason why someone has taken to alcohol what you did to someone because of what you did to someone right now they've turned drunks they are now drinking they are just drink, spending the rest of their lives drinking because you mishandled people their lives are whimsical because of the way you mistreated people their potentials are, are destroyed this message also is to men of god women of god handle the people that you meet with care that person you meet on the streets as long as there is life in them handle them with care because the life that is in them is the part of the of the lord that we serve the part the twin of the holy spirit that god released in the form of a breath into a sculpture or a clay handle this thing called life with care well you know i don't know who has offended you I don't know who who is so annoying they are ungrateful yes but listen from today because of this thing called life in them handle them with care because that's that person you are angry with that person you don't want to hear from what if tomorrow you heard that they were dead remember you used to love them you used to they used to be very close with you but because they mishandled 
because they did things anyhow. You don't want to lose your life. You don't want to lose someone else's life. And so, ladies and gentlemen, my message is very simple. The Bible says, Second Samuel chapter four, verse four, that after Saul, after Mephibosheth died, I mean, after Jonathan died in the war, his father Saul was afraid, and so he drew the sword, sword, and killed himself. And so the nurse that was taking care of Jonathan's son was afraid that because, excuse me, because of how, because of how, you know, because of how um, David mistreated David, I mean, because of how Saul mistreated David, now that, you know, David is king, the nurse was afraid that he might mistreat, you know, Mephibosheth, because that was the trend. That was what was going on. When a new king comes, he mistreats the, the previous king and their families. Amen. And so the Bible said the nurse took the young boy, the five-year-old Mephibosheth, the five-year-old prince. You see, right now, when we, whenever we talk about Mephibosheth, what, what comes to your mind is a poor boy, an outcast, a dejected person. But listen, Mephibosheth was a prince. Mephibosheth lived in the palace, but it was because of how somebody mishandled him. Because of how somebody had a good intention but was running away. Because of, because of how somebody treated him out of fear. Mephibosheth now became lame. And so even though a time came that David asked the soldiers to go bring Mephibosheth, even though a time came that Mephibosheth came back to the, you know, to the palace, he was still lame. Please handle people with care. Because maybe there may be reconciliation. Maybe there may be rest restitution. But the pain or the, you know, the havoc you might have caused may never be rectified again. Handle this thing called life with care. Please, forget about what people have done to you. Handle your own life with care. If you have to start going back to the gym, don't be there and gain too much weight like an elephant and die. It goes to me too. Don't be sitting down and just be praying without, you know, eating right. And one person sometimes for three days I, I may not eat. I, sometimes I forget that I've not eaten. This message is also for me. That it is not enough to pray. You have to also eat. You have to also go to the hospital for medical checkup. You have to use the gym, exercise. Because, listen, the reason why God brought you on this earth is not because of the sex you want to have. It's not because of the children you want to have. It's not because of that cute husband or cute, beautiful wife you and I want to have. It is because God had created the universe and he needed a manager. God wants you to come and work. Listen, the reason why you are on this earth is not because of your pleasures and your sentiments. It's because of work. That is why I keep saying that everybody must work for God because many people have lost focus. You are on this earth to work for God. The Bible says he created everything, animals, everything, plants, and he saw that it was good. And he said, now I need to create, let's make man in our image that they will come and take dominion to control. Your purpose as a human being is to work. That is why we are making noise that work for God, work for God, work for God. Don't lose focus. You are not on this earth just because of sex. You are not here just because of sex. You are here to work. The Bible says, Cain and Abel. Cain killed a brother, Abel. God asked him, Where is your brother? He said, Am I my brother's keeper? If he wasn't, God wouldn't have asked him. That is why James 5 16 says, Confess your sins to one another. And pray for each other that you may be healed. Take care of your person. Take care of the, the person next to you. As long as there is life in them, this thing called life must be handled just like an egg. 
even more than an egg because once it drops you cannot pick them up anymore how many of us have lost people that we wish we could have forgiven them before they died how many of us have heard that people died and we wish you know we could have made an mess with them and they died how many of us heard bad news about people? Maybe they were in prison or something bad happened to them. And we wish that we could have helped them. Upon all they did against us, we wish that we could have, we could have helped them in a way. Don't wait till it's too late. There is this thing called life. Handle life with care. Handle your own life with care. The God has a purpose for you being in this life. The purpose of God for you is, is in my plans. I know my plans for you. Don't kill yourself just because you lost a relationship. What is wrong with you? Why would you kill yourself? Because you know this person is cheating. You know this person is unfaithful. You know this person is that. And you lost them and you are crying. You know this person can beat you. He, they are always beating you. You lost them and you are crying. What is, what is wrong with you? There is life in you. And so handle the life that you have with care. Because you heard somebody say something about you and it's not true or maybe it's true or maybe they expose your secret. You, you, you are so down, crying, da, 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 da. Because you heard you, Madina, because you heard somebody die. You, eh, eh. And preserve yours, that life that you have. Handle your life with care. Yeah, they died. It's not good. We don't like it. But hey, let me preserve mine. Because mine can slip out of my hands. Handle people with care. This is the short message I have for you. And I know it's been a blessing to you. Treat people right. Treat people very right. Today, it might seem like they, they need you. But tomorrow you may never know. I am, I, I, am a, I am a testimony to this. There are so many people who have come into my life. You know, that is why, that is why most of those of you who have my number, you can call me at any time and I pick up. You know why? Sometimes you, you, you think I don't want to sleep too. You think I don't want my privacy. I'm, I'm one person, I don't want to be on the phone. I'm, I, I want to be on my phone, but I don't want to be on phone calls. Sometimes, most of the time, after five minutes, I'm not listening to what you are saying. Amen. But because I don't know what tomorrow might bring. I don't know. There is something an old man told me years ago. You know, he said, Ernest, we don't humility, right? We don't humility. Our house in Ghana, you know, as at those days, you know, a lot of people, my sister, my, my sister is watching Beverly. Our house in Ghana, in our neighborhood, you know, like it was, it is a big house. And so, like people referred, you know, people respected the house, you know, you know, yeah, you know. And so, we, you know, because of our background, some of us became proud. But one day, I'm not saying this to make myself feel special. One day, a man called me and he said, you are, you are very different. You are very humble. You know, upon all the background and stuff like that, you are very humble. And he says something that treat people well because maybe you may not need anything from them, but tomorrow, you know, because in this life, nobody has ever, nobody owns all the streets in the world. Maybe you have the big house, maybe you have this, maybe you have that. But tomorrow you may end up in someone else's neighborhood, maybe in a village. And you might need a place to use a bathroom. That was what the man told me. And if you are too proud, if you mistreat people, you may be too proud to go ask them to use their bathroom. And guess what? You will mess yourself up and the disgrace will come to you. Treat people well. Tomorrow you may never know how much of need you may need from them treat people well. Mephibosheth was a potential prince. David loved the boy. David went to get the boy, help the boy, restored him of whatever he, you know, he, uh, he had. But out of fear, because of fear, the nurse was trying to run away with her. And guess what? 
she mishandled the boy. Who are the people God has entrusted you with? Your children, your family members. They may be annoying. They may be insulting you. They may be very provocative. But handle them with care. As long as there is life in them. Because tomorrow, if you hear something bad has happened to them, you may never be happy. You may, you may, you may beat yourself up. That, oh, I wish I had forgiven them. I wish I had done this for them. Let it go. What they did is painful. But just let it go because of Christ. Before I end my message, I want to end with this way. Like I said, you have to handle your life with care. You cannot live your life anyhow. You cannot just claim that you are a Christian just because you go to church and not fully commit yourself to Jesus Christ. Maybe you are a Christian, you are a minister. You are a preacher, a prophet, an evangelist. Gifted. But you know that if Jesus should come today because of one sin, because of something, you may never go. He will call you a worker of iniquity. The Bible says even Joshua the high priest, because of a, high, because of a filthy garment, the Bible says he was a high priest. You see, for someone to be a high priest, it means they are gifted. It means they are anointed. It means probably they are educated. But because of a filthy garment, the Bible says Satan was standing on his, on his right hand side, resisting him. Jesus. Beloved, you cannot live your life anyhow. You know, you may do all the good things, you may pray, you may fast, but if there's any sin in you, it can be the reason why you might end up in hell. If your relationship with God is not right, if you are not working for God, if you are not treating people right, if you are not treating the lives in people, if you are not handling them with care, you may end up in hell. That is why Jesus said, because, because when I was in the prison, when I was sick, when I was poor, when I was naked, you were not there for me. And Jesus said, because you did not do it for people. That is why you have to handle the life in people with care. Because if there is anything that can slip out of your hand and you can never pick them up again. You see, the same way you handle an egg with care. Knowing that even when I drop the egg, I can buy another one. When I drop the phone, when the, when the phone slips out of your hands, you can get a new, a new phone. Sometimes you can even get a new screen to fix it. But this thing called life, when it drops, when, when it, it is lost, it is gone forever. That's why you cannot live your life anyhow. You cannot say, you know, yeah, I'm prayerful, but only one sin. You may never know when you will drop that life. The thing about, you see, when you are dropping the egg, when they drop, I mean, when the egg slips out of your hand, sometimes you will know, so you, you may be able to save it. When the phone is slipping out, out of your hands, you know, like I told you earlier, sometimes I will use my foot, my, you know, sometimes I, I use my leg or my foot to make sure that, you know, to catch the phone. But when this thing called life slips within seconds, and you are gone you can never save your life you can never pick it up again i want you to be true to yourself maybe you you have been baptized probably gifted man of god woman of god but you know if jesus if you if you should drop your life right now all the good things you did may be useless all the prayers you prayed may be useless the many fasting we did may be useless because of maybe one sin. Be true to yourself. Because you may never know. Maybe, maybe, God forbid, maybe from here I can drop my life. Maybe you too can drop your life. Maybe this is why God wants you to listen to this message and take it serious. I want you to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ right now. Listen, don't tell me I have the Holy Spirit. Don't tell me I've been baptized. If you had the, if you have the Holy Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit and you are still messing up, if you have the Holy Spirit and you are still treating people like trash, 
you treat your phone so right you clean your phone you wash your car you clean your car you handle your things with care but treat the person on the street anyhow just because they are dressed shabbily just because they may have a different color just because they may not speak your language just because they may come from a different place just because they may look you know awkward or ugly you handle them with like trash please you may not like them you may not like the appearance but I want you to think about this that if I gave you my phone the same way you will make sure that I will come back for my phone without any scratch and so you handle my phone with care please handle the people that you meet with care look beyond their appearances look beyond their sentiments look beyond their di your differences and see that there is life in them and this thing called life when it drops I, we cannot pick it up again and so I will handle with care and that thing called life in you your life don't live your life anyhow you know there is a God you know there is Jesus you know a time is coming there will be judgment but you are just you are a Christian but you still drink you are a Christian you are not married but you are still messing up We've all done that before. When we were Christians. When I was a Christian, I still messed up some way. But listen, how long must we be fools? How long must we continue to be fools? Yes, I use that word. The Bible says, And therefore, do not be stupid, but understand what the will of the Lord is. That thing that you are doing, you think is giving you pleasure. It is stopping your own blessing. Young lady, right now you think you are beautiful. You know all the, you know every almost every guy wants to get you. Yeah, you can get you can get some in him. Or, I mean, whenever you want. Yeah, but it is stopping your great blessing, young man, man of God. It is stopping you. You think women like you? You are handsome. Yeah, but it's a weapon. It's a trap to make sure that the perfect will of God will never be established. There is this thing called life. A time is coming, God is going to ask you, how did you spend this life? How did you spend the life in others also? Handle this thing called life with care. I want you to be true to yourself. I'm going to play a song in the background. Be true to yourself. Work yourselves out on your own salvation. You know there is something that you are doing that is wrong. Just open up your mouth and pray to God. And say, Lord Jesus... I'm running back to you, Father. I am prayerful, but I am so jealous. I am prayerful, but I am I masturbate. I'm not married and I'm having sex. I, I am angry, I am bitter because of what my father did to me, because of what my mother did to me. But Lord, I've mistreated people anyhow because of how they caused me pain. I've mishandled my own life. I have failed to go for medical checkups. I failed to eat right. I failed to work out. I failed to use the gym. Somebody, it's not just about praying. There's this thing called life. Preserve it. Don't cut your life short. Pray to God. Just open up your mouth. Just open up your mouth and pray to God. I'm playing this song. Just pray. Talk to God. Rededicate your life to Jesus. Come on. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, bring my life to you, Lord. Father, please fix me, Lord. Somebody rededicate your life to Jesus. Come on. Rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus. For, ask for forgiveness. Jesus. Jesus. Now rededicate my life to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus. In the my life. In the hell I've lived in the hell, Lord Jesus. I pray for divine wisdom, Lord. Jesus, I pray for your Lion, lion of the tribe of Judah. Somebody open up your mouth and talk to God. Father, I've mishandled my life. I've mishandled the lives of people. I've caused them pain. Maybe you are the reason why right now a man has taken to alcohol. You broke their hearts and so they are messing up. You may be the reason why a lady has, you know, has become a prostitute. You broke their hearts 
And so right now they can't trust anymore. Ask for forgiveness. Rededicate your life to God. There is still there is this thing called life in you. Follow the life in you. Pray to God. Somebody open up your mouth. How have you treated your wife? Say, Lord, I've mistreated my wife. Forgive me, Lord. What they did may be painful, but I forgive them, Lord. Forgive me for how I mishandled them. How did you treat your husband? How have you treated your children? How have you treated someone else's children? The people that cause you pain. How have you mishandled them? There is this thing called life in them. And in him is life and the life is Jesus Christ. And so you might think you are mishandling the person, but you are mishandling Jesus Christ. That person that is poor, that came along your way, how did you treat them? You are not anointed because you can pray for long. You cannot. You are not anointed because demons and principalities fly at your feet. You are anointed because of how you handle people. People that are of low pedigree. People that amount to nothing. How did you treat them? How did you treat the life that is in them? Pray to God. The Lord, even that mad person on the streets. Some people see mad people and they put their beds and beat them. Just because they are insane. Are you crazy? You are the one that is crazy. You see a mad person and you beat them. You are rather crazy. Fool. How are you treating the lives that are in people? People. The life that God has deposited in them. How are you handling them? You handle an egg, which is like a 25, a 25 cent egg. You handle with so much care. You handle your phone with so much care. But you don't, you treat people anyhow. You think you bought your phone for a thousand, a thousand dollars, so it is more expensive than that person. Go to the hospital. Go to the hospital. There are people that are in need of hearts. They have billions of dollars, millions of dollars. M Michael Jackson had 12 doctors surrounding him, people that were around him to, do to donate organs to him, but they died. Treat people with care. It's not about money. Handle everybody with care. Talk to God. Handle your own life. You have sex like a goat, excuse me to say. You don't work out, I don't work out. Uh, me, I have a gym, I have gym membership, but I don't even go to the gym. May God forgive me. It's not enough to be praying. You have to handle this thing called life because God has a purpose for you, for your life. Don't cut your life short and come and blame a, a witch. Open up your mouth and talk to God. Come on. Talk to Jesus. Come on. Tell God to forgive you for however you have treated people, even those who cause you pain. And pray that Lord preserve my life. Preserve my life for me. Give me wisdom to preserve my life. If I have to go back to the gym, if I have to see the doctor, come on. I love this portion of the song. Woo! This is my favorite part of the song. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for using me, Lord. So much love. Come on, talk to God. Come talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord to give you wisdom to handle your life. That you do not cut your life short. Pray. they are poor, whether they are sick, whether they are mad, whether they are crazy, ungrateful, treat them like Christ is in them. Because the life is Christ living in them. Come on. 
I ask God, I ask God for wisdom that you may live long, that you will, you will preserve the life in you, that you will not cut your life short. Pray for wisdom. Are you talking to Jesus? Tell God to give you the heart to forgive people. The heart to forgive. The heart to forgive. Pray the Lord, give me the heart to forgive people that may handle their lives with care. Say, Lord, you know, don't let, don't be the reason why somebody would take to alcohol. Don't be the reason why someone would say there is no God. Come on. Talk to God. Open up your mouth and talk to Jesus. Come on. bless you so before I end this I want you to know the root of man the origin of man man is a clay that God placed himself the Spirit of God like the Holy Spirit of God a part of the Holy Spirit is hidden that treasure that's what the Bible says within you are hidden all treasures what do you think it is good no the part of the Holy Spirit is hidden in a man. And they became living soul. That is how you cannot mishandle any man anyhow. Because it is God disguising himself in a clay. It is God hiding himself, you know, in the flesh. That is who man is. That's why you cannot treat... The, man, the way you treat a man is the way you treat your God. That's why Jesus said, as you did not do it for them, you've not done it for me. Handle life with care. Handle your own life with care. It is not enough to be praying, praying, praying. It is not enough to be fasting, fasting, fasting. You know, go for medical checkups, work out, run, exercise, eat right. Handle your life with care, because God has a God has a plan with. I mean, God has a plan with your life. Don't cry because of what you lost. Don't cry because of what you don't have still preserve your life handle this thing called life with care because the time is coming when god's time is up you'll know the use of this life that you have you see when we have an egg in our hands we handle the egg with care we are very cautious that we don't drop the egg but most times even if the egg slips out of your hands you can still buy a new egg when your phone slips out of your hands you can buy a, a new phone but there is something that slips when it slips out of your hand you can never replace it and that is life you can never replace this thing called life
to handle life with care. Life that is in you and life that is in others. Handle with care. Don't be the reason why somebody will go and sit somewhere and be crying. Treat people well. When you see they are poor, when, this, when you see they are struggling, when you see anything, you may be struggling too, but try to help them. Be a savior of men. Be the reason why somebody will say that God listened to my prayer. Be the reason why somebody will say, wow, God was thinking about me. Treat people right. As, at all costs, save a life. Saving souls is not just about bringing them, for them to lift their hands and say, I receive Jesus. Saving soul is making sure that people's lives are not cut short. Saving soul is making sure that somebody will not die out of starvation. Saving soul is making sure that somebody will not die because they were sick and they had no money to go to the hospital. If you can, help them and God will help you. They may be ungrateful. They may not appreciate, but do it for Jesus. Preserve your life. You know there is a God. You know Jesus is coming. You believe in Jesus. You go to church, you sing in a choir, but you live your life anyhow. Knowing that right from the day you are having sex, right, right from when the man you know gets up, gets off you, you could die. When you get off the woman, you could die. Let's think and know that this thing called life cannot be lived to chances because anything can happen. You know there is a time that there will be judgment. You know Christ is coming. You know you don't know when you will die. You know you can die this very moment. But just because of money, you are just messing up. You are a young man. You are sleeping with another man. Who, are, are you a goat? Are you, are you insane to be sleeping with another man, young man, just because of what they can do for you? Are you crazy? You must be kept in a, in a zoo. You are a lady. You are sleeping with a, a, a fellow female. What is wrong with you? Please, I, I'm using these harsh words so that you would think, so that I would think. And you know that this thing called life can slip out of our hands anytime anytime no matter how cautious you are anything can happen don't leave your life to chance i bless you in the name of jesus and i pray that god will give each one of us wisdom to preserve our lives but even you know even even until god drops anything to you i want you to know that each right workout exercise go to the doctor you know when Jesus healed people, he would tell them, go and, you know, show yourself. It means go and be diagnosed. Jesus is not against, you know, the works of doctors. It is him that gives them wisdom. So don't be too spiritual, ignoring the works of the hospital. See a doctor. Go for medical checkups. Eat right. Work out. Exercise. Preserve life. Make sure that you don't cut your life short. By drinking, by having sex, by sinning, by worrying. The Bible says, for which of you, by worrying, has been able to add even an inch to their lifespan? Don't be overthinking and cut your life short. Preserve your life. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for using me. In Jesus' name. If you are in the UK or you are in Ghana, by the grace of God, between, I mean, between September and October, you'll be coming to the UK and we'll be, we'll be coming also to Ghana for some projects. Please, if you want to be a blessing to it, maybe financially or any way, you feel free to inbox me. And you are not doing it for me. Like I always say, I've never done this. But God said, give them the chance that they may also be blessed. Do this and God will also. Remember he said, if you, as you did not do for me, you have not done it. As you not do for people, You've not done it for the poor because we'll be going to the prisons, especially in Ghana. We'll be going to the prison, orphan homes, orphanages, you know. So please try to sow into this. If you are a health worker, or maybe you want to support, maybe you want to be a blessing, maybe a, an usher, whatever, in Ghana, feel free to inbox me. However, you want God to be a blessing. 
but don't just don't just offer your body offer your cash also yes we need the cash god bless you and your prayer you may not have money but your prayer is very important peter and john says silver and god money we don't have but we have prayer support with your prayer because we are doing the true work of god and i encourage you that everybody must work for god god bless you bye bye thank you holy spirit